<laughs> yeah. Car I mean, carbon is the material of choice in the bike industry now for a lot of reasons. Um, very, very strong. Uh, it's repairable in a way that aluminum really isn't. So if you damage part of it, you can patch it, you can sand it down, you can repair it. Um, you know, in, in olden, you know, in, in the last generation of the aluminum racing chairs in particular, they're out there, once you bend something or damage mm -hmm. it, like, you might as well throw the chair away. So there's an advantage to carbon in, in repair, but there's also a huge advantage in terms of um, the shapes that you can achieve. So, you know, if you look at the main frame here, it's not, it's not a tube, it's not a box, it's a tube and a box. Mm -hmm. And that, we, you know, we decided that that was probably a shape that would be conducive to both lateral and torsional stiffness, which is what we wanted to achieve with the mainframe. And then on the top, I mean, it's a bit of a patchwork because it's a prototype, but we can literally custom tailor the thicknesses of every, every part of this chair. So the carbon here is super, super thick because you want your your um, fenders to be really stiff so that you're not bowing in and mm -hmm. pushing into the wheels. But right here, it's very thin because all you're trying to do is keep yourself from, you know, pushing out into the wheels. And you don't need it to be that stiff. You just need to be held from rubbing. And that's determined by the layers of the carbon yeah, plot that you use. The type of carbon that you use, so you can get different ounce thicknesses, different weights. So sort of like the high-tech weights, wetsuits they're using now where you can have thicker stuff on the, the legs and thinner stuff in the crotch area. And yeah. Exactly. Interesting. So, and, and carbon fiber, I mean, I may be doing our, us a disservice in saying this, but it's glorified paper mache. Like, it really is. It's You, you soak it in, in glue and you form it around, you know, a, a shape. So in the similar way that you would put paper mache over a balloon and let it harden, and then it's that shape. As long as that balloon is whatever shape you want and you put your paper mache on it, it's going to assume that shape. Now carbon has properties where the straighter the line is, the stronger it is, but in a curve, you know, it's still stronger than almost every material that you would ever be able to make these kind of shapes out of, certainly. So it's it's not, and you treat it like wood. I mean, you sand it, you drill it, you, you know, you, you really work with it as if it's wood. Um, and it's not th that difficult to work with. So did they make a mold of your butt? For the, for the bucket, <laughs> no. you know, like they do for some of the sit skis, or yeah, no. you don't have to do that. No, and there, I mean, there are some advantages to doing things like that. For me personally, I don't think I would have got much more out of the chair by having it be that custom. Mm -hmm. And then, and especially with a racing chair, to be that precise and to get your positioning exactly right wasn't really what we were trying to do. Um, what we wanted to do with this chair was to make a shape that was ergonomic but then also allow for some adjustability so mm -hmm. it's it's it, you won't be able to see it but my knee position is not fixed so it's on a rail system and I can move my knees up and down so I can reposition my knees but it's a solid during a race not yet but we're working on that that's the stuff that you know Kanab was dreaming about like know. in the early 80s I know it yeah so and and with this material with our rail system, we can really do that because what we do is we come down into a rail and then that lets us track up and down within that rail, which allows us to slide up and down in height. Oh, that'd be dynamite for youth programs. Yeah, well, that's and that's exactly the development of this chair was really intended to be for an adjustable chair for programs like that where you, you, you don't know what it this person needs and that need may change as they grow or as they develop as an athlete you know everyone starts with their knees way high and then works them down yeah. and it's in the right position and so we really wanted an adjustable chair to do that um, and we've got another version of this chair that has a base with a, a, a seating platform that detaches so it bolts on and then you can so you can swap out the seating platform and you have a telescoping axle so you can have a chair that fits you know nine inches at the top oh so you have the modularity that you have in your everyday chair it's a drivetrain with a seating platform. Interesting. Mm -hmm. The compensator system still pretty much yeah. the old school. Yeah, we and and we've been working on pieces and parts. That's the next thing that we're going to attack. Uh, we have a design that um, I can't talk about because it's in a patent process right sure. now. But it eliminates the compensator, so we have no more spring compensator. Um, but it's, and it's a, a much more intuitive way of steering. No more spring compensator. Done. Done. I didn't see this. Yeah. And I mean, like, 
that technology, and, that, and this is sort of the problem that I have with the entire wheelchair world, is that we've been using those compensators since 1990. Mm -hmm. How is it possible that nobody's come up with something better than that? Like, that was the first shot at the title, and it's still the champ. Like, come on. And we curse them every day. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Strappage, you've got... Uh... Yeah, so again, I mean, I, I use, I don't seat belt in. Um, because my chair is so tight that I don't come up out of it anyway. I don't use a back strap because I like to be able to sit up. Mm -hmm. Some people do. But that's the beauty of carbon is that to add a loop back here, you bond it on and you put it wherever you want. Um, so I use a strap in the front where I strap my knees back so that I'm driving the chair and every push I can drive the chair with my mm -hmm. hips and knees. Um, some people can do that, some can't. I also strap down and this is a pad. Um, it gives me just a little bit of distance between my the top of my legs and my chest, which lets me mm -hmm. breathe a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And I've been experimenting with different thicknesses. And um, I actually have a cap that I've used that comes down. It's a hard cap. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I'd like to try to get like a bigger distance in between my chest and my knees just to open up my breathing. The diaphragm is an issue. It's huge. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know if I have. Like, I don't have a lot of lower back, I don't have full strength in my lower back, but somebody who does, I mean, to be able to sit, um, much like Craig used to, with a yeah. wide open, you know, breathing apparatus, yeah. it's, that's perfect. Hmm. Um, so when's it going to come to the market? We're probably a year away, a year, a year and a bit. We're going to try, and, and this is, you know, a, a bit of a pipe dream right now, we're going to try and have some present in London. Oh, at the marathon? Oh. No, in, in oh, the, 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 the games. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, I mean, we, we would really have to be in the market sort of a year before games. But you, you're planning on, you're not going to retire, you're going to be shooting for an 800 or 1500 meter oh, we'll talk, race? And, we'll talk about that when yeah, the camera's on. Yeah, okay. But it's super light. I think it's, what does it weigh on? Um, all in, like, I mean, I've got, a, I've got tires and stuff in here, so it's a little heavier than it should be right now. Um, i got my road set up, but with my track set up, uh, really, really small brake and everything sort of pared down at 17 pounds. Comparable to any aluminum racer that's out there. Tons lighter than any aluminum chair. And but most of them have a whole bunch of fiberglass fairing. Right. That time. The, light, the lightest um, aluminum chair that I ever had uh, from top end was a 21 pound chair. Because um, mm. I mean, my chairs are all real long and, and you know, braced and I, I need really stiff chairs so I usually mm -hmm. have cross braces but this is four pounds lighter than the best aluminum chair I ever had. And it doesn't fatigue. You know, it's, it's fascinating. It's something that we've been dreaming about for years. It's fun to see somebody actually doing something with the with the with yeah. the material, and it's really cool that it happens to be a chair user themselves developing it. Yeah. Let's it's, talk. Sorry, let me. Just, I'll just add yeah. one last thing: is that like I, and anybody's ever seen me race, I just I beat my chairs to within an inch of their life, and my aluminum chairs would have about a six month lifespan. Lifespan. Yeah, and I was when I was especially when I was sponsored, I was changing my chairs every half year just because they would fatigue and get softer. Mm. And I've been using this chair for three years now. Get out. Yeah, which is longer than I've ever used any chair ever in my entire life, and it's exactly as fast as it was as the day I built it. Um, like it does not, the, the carbon does not fatigue. In the the muscle memory, that, that's very important for an athlete. It's true. You're not having to adjust new positioning. Yeah, for sure. Wow. Yeah. Well, and, and that's the beauty too, like if I build another chair like this, I don't have to hit the exact right knee height or the exact right seat height because they're both adjustable within a range so I can get you know now and because everything is solid and in place you can actually measure as mm -hmm. opposed to these you know morphing aluminum things that yeah. don't necessarily get the file fall. out and yeah can you lift the, the front wheel up Jeff just so we can see how the how clean the bottom is yeah wow. so I mean this isn't so this is all fairing right now no um, more mylar yeah very little of it um, you know, and I don't have the fairing on the back right now, but we, what we did was we shaped it um, so that this is conducive to a very aerodynamic fairing that I put on the back. It's just easier when I'm traveling to be able to grab something to steer it around, so I take it off. Um, but the fairing goes on here. It's flat and or it's curved in the right way. The bottom's flat the way it should be for the trail coming out. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and again, we've had a lot of advice from. Cervello, who do nothing but think about aerodynamics every single day, and and it makes a huge difference. Like I'm faster mm -hmm. into the wind in this chair than I've ever been. So I pray for headwinds now. Well, it's huge. That's when you make the move. That was great. Very intriguing. As is the everyday chair. Mm -hmm.